Good morning. Oh, that's great. Let's do it again. Good morning. I'm Mary Prefontaine, the immensely proud president and CEO of the Institute for Career Advancement Needs, fondly known as I Can. Welcome to ICANN's 19th Annual Women's Leadership Conference. It is truly great to have all of you and so many of you with us this morning. In 1954, on his 80th birthday, Winston Churchill gave an interview in which he said, I have never accepted what people have kindly said, namely that I inspired the nation. It was the nation that had the lion heart, and I had the luck to be called upon to give the roar. For over 30 years, ICANN has been giving the roar for women and men in leadership. And today, ICANN is hosting its 19th annual Conversation for Women with Lion Hearts. Women who give the roar for provocative, and energetic conversations that catalyze global change. Women who give the roar for equal opportunity to enable dreams to take flight. Women who give the roar for transformational ideas whose time has come. And as we begin this remarkable day of powerful ideas from extraordinary women, I am reminded that as the song goes, this could be the start of something big. And each idea that you take from today is a seed waiting to germinate throughout the world tomorrow. And just ask Arianna Huffington about a, the power of an idea that finds fertile soil. Ask Mary Robinson in Ireland. Ask Fran Root and Gail Browning. Ask Unsang Su Chi who after decades of injustice and house arrest in Myanmar, just this week rang the bell for democracy by winning a seat in parliament for the very first time. These are lion-hearted women. I believe that there is no more powerful force than an idea championed by passionate and resolute voices. The more voices we bring to the choir, the greater the chance we're going to be heard in the back row. And just note that this powerful force does come with a qualifier. Great ideas cannot exist in a vacuum. Absent of people with determination and passion to elevate good intentions to successful results, great ideas are only ink on paper, whispers of what might have been that agitate the mind. At ICANN, great ideas begin with conversations. And one conversation leads to another. Before we know it, it's a big conversation, and it's a global conversation. And so today, I invite you to this conversation. And I invite you to bring your lion heart to it. And I want to suggest uh, one very specific idea that will help you become part of this global conversation and you don't have to leave your own backyard. There is one way for you to drop the penny in the pond and affect the world, your company, your corporate culture, your every day from sun up to sundown. And it's very simple. If you are willing to roar, there is no better way to begin than by the words you choose. Hear the meaning within the word, for every word has power. And what I'm referring to today is civility. To quote Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we must learn to disagree without being disagreeable. We must learn to understand what that really means. When the level of public discourse falls to the point where a national radio personality calls a young woman a slut and a prostitute for suggesting that health care should cover birth control, well, it's time 
it's time to recall Dr. King's advice and words and put them into action. You know, civility is not a word we typically associate with corporate America, nor is it a word we ascribe to, to the daily toing and froing of organizations around the world. Yet I ask you to consider the impact of our corporate cultures where civility is not just expected, but it's championed by senior leadership. So what do I mean by civility? Well, the definition I, li I really like best is provided by the Institute for Civility in Government. That could be an oxymoron. Um, but the definition is this. Civility is claiming and caring for one's identity, needs, and beliefs without degrading someone else's in the process. And it begins with us. Without civility, we give life to Gandhi's observation that an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. And many of the leaders I work with tell me they spend as much as 40% of their time managing the fear factor. Well, that's 40% of their time being on the receiving end of verbal outbursts and negative behaviors and actions by others. It is usually the leader with the most power who, of course, provokes the most fear. And so with leaders worried about outbursts and nasty behavior and all that, imagine the toll the fear factor is taking on the people who wield substantially less power, which is everybody else. And I don't have to imagine the toll. I've lived it. I was telling someone this story, and they said, you should share that, so I'm going to. I worked for a CEO who every afternoon around 4 o'clock would begin to wander the halls. And he would start at one end, popping his head into each office as he went, stopping to talk, or rather berate anyone who had the unfortunate timing of looking up from their work just as he paused at their door. Well, the entire team learned early on that in order to dodge Dan, we had to have a system in place to let the other one know that he was coming their direction. So the person closest to his office would call the next person, and so on and so on. And this is what they would say, the dog's loose. <laughs> I became masterful at avoiding him, and I would simply pretend I was on a very important call, and when he got to my door, I'd and that was it, and he'd keep going. So although many a CEO would you know, espouse that they challenge their people, often those challenges feel threatening. And the reality is simple. We all know that we blossom when, cha when challenged, and we wither when we're threatened. And here's the thing. There's no data stating that anxious and fearful employees are more creative and productive. They're less committed, they're less loyal, and they're less engaged. Those who have been targets of such bad behavior often become uncivil themselves. They spread gossip to deflect attention. They sabotage their peers. They call in sick, they leave early, and worse yet, they steal other people's lunches out of the office refrigerator. <laughs> we know who they are. As reported in the Harvard Business Journal, employees faced with incivility are more likely to also narrow their focus to avoid risk. And in a time when we need innovation and risk-taking in this country, we're losing opportunities to learn, to grow in the process of our every day. This impacts career success and the success of organizations. So why is civility in the workplace important to the world at large? I'm sure some of you have an idea. Most of us spend about 40 hours a week, at least, at work. Imbuing our workplace with civility would no doubt have a ripple effect on our larger society. Key to a civil corporate culture and a civil society are strong interpersonal skills and emotional intelligence. The ability to 
assess and identify and control our own emotions. And an increasing number of hiring authorities will tell us that hiring for EQ is of equal importance to hiring for IQ. Emotional intelligence is the foundation of ICANN's leadership programs. And I believe it's the bedrock of civil discourse, not only within our organizations, but throughout society. So just imagine what civility could bring, not only to boardrooms, but to political discourse around the world. Liberals and conservatives will always disagree. Democrats and Republicans will always disagree. But we must heed Dr. S Dr. King's advice, and we must begin a global conversation on the merits of disagreeing without being disagreeable, on having political debate without ad hominem attacks that lead to violence. Civility costs nothing and buys us everything. So I'm convinced that civility in our corporate dialogue is the best way to influence civility in our national and global discourse. So, what can you do? Well, you can choose your words carefully. As reasonable people, you can disagree reasonably. And you can remove the fear factor. And you can use your influence to contribute to a civil society. The global conversation, I promise you, will only get better. Today, I invite you to share your lion heart. Share your lion heart and roar. And I want to hear you roar. And roar with the intention, which is my intention, if you wish to share it, is to make the world a more civil and caring place. Thank you.